Hey there, Vinyl Community. It's Joel coming to you uh, with another video. Uh, today is Saturday, December 1st, 2018, and as promised, I'm going to do my uh, November Hall Part 2. Plus, I got some more Record Store Day pickups, and um, someone you asked me a question about where I'm shooting. I'm shooting from my attic. I don't have a cool background because uh, it gets quite hot up here in the summer, and I'm worried about my vinyl melting, so I just got some DVDs and some junky boxes back there. And I have my office in my attic because, um, why not? <laughs> and I'm, I'm just shooting from a webcam. I, I think eventually I might, I have a camera. I'm just kind of lazy to re-upload the video to my computer and my webcam just does it instantly. And if I took a lot of time doing these videos, I don't think I'd do it. Uh, anyway, so my router first before I get into everything, um, Last time we talked about All Scoopers Paranormal, and for some reason I said the packaging in this isn't that unique or great, and I, I lied. I don't know why I said that. I didn't mean that. Um, aside from the custom labels and sleeves, which I showed you last week, I didn't show you the gatefold image, which is cool. It's of Al Scooper. Nice little drawing. He's looking gruff there. And that vinyl also comes with a CD. It's like a mini CD. It's like a live album. I don't know why they didn't put the whole concert on here. Who knows? Uh, this but is a six track concert from uh, Columbus, Ohio from May 6, 2016. It's got No More Mr. Nice Guy, Under My Wheels, Billion Dollar Babies, Feed My Frankenstein, Only Women Bleed, and School's Out. Uh, it sounds great. It's, uh, I guess, his current band's on there and they shred. He's got uh, three guitarists, I think. One, one bassist, one drummer. Um... One thing of note, uh, Feed My Frankenstein on here is great. There's some pauses in it because they do bring out like a nine foot Frankenstein monster at some point in the concert. So you might be wondering what's going on. And uh, I think the definitive for me, I just thought I'd mention it. Definitive uh, Feed My Frankenstein live version is probably the Rob Zombie Alice Cooper version on A Fistful of Alice. Uh, if you don't have that live album by Oz Cooper, I recommend you get it. It's, it's one of his better live albums, although they're all they're all great. You can't go wrong with Oz Cooper. Next record store day pickup is Garbage, uh, Destroying Angels. Garbage was like a, I guess it got popular in 1994 with it, I'm Only Happy When It Rains, and then they had a couple more albums after that. They're still around. Uh, the singer is Shirley uh, Manson. She's a Scottish woman. I don't know if the band's European or just Shirley. Um, but this is a track with uh, John Doe and uh, Xene Cervenka, if I pronounce that right. Uh, they're from a uh, punk, I guess I guess it's a punk band called X. Is it X? I think it's X. I could be wrong. I looked it up earlier and now I kind of forget. Once I get on camera, I forget things. And uh, so the one track is Destroying Angels. The other track is Starman by um, David Bowie. They do a cover. And both these tracks are great. And I've managed to pick that up for $12. I did see Chris Cornell's 7-inch, but it was $16.99. I just couldn't justify getting it for that cost. Because $16.99, you can get a full LP on sale. I kind of regret it now, but, you know... I don't want to go broke. And I'm getting that way. November cost me a lot of money, and I did budget for it, though. And I think December is going to cost me a lot of money, too. But January, my unboxing videos probably won't be as long because i got to pay off that credit card debt, which is I have the funds, so I'm not really in debt, but I do put everything on the credit card. And then you look at your bank account, and then you look at your credit card bill, and you're like, oof. And all your money that you save goes to the credit card. I think we're all there in the vinyl community. Otherwise, we'd have everything. Next record store day pickup I got is from 2017. They had this for $8.99. I guess it didn't sell very well in the last record store day that they carried it. So it is uh, Johnny Cash's 7-inch. And it's of The Man Comes Around, written by Johnny Cash. And then he does a cover of Personal Jesus by M. Gore. Uh, Def Leppard just did a... Um, cover of Personal Jesus as well. And I was going to, you know, watching it, I was like, oh, I've heard Personal Jesus covered so many times, but Def Leppard, I recommend you watch it. Um, 
maybe I'll put it in the link below, uh, description below. It's it's a pretty cool video, and it sounds great, you know. So this came on white vinyl. It's got the Def Jam uh, logo going on there. And my final record door record store day pickup is um, my second most wanted. My first one was Alice Cooper Live at the AstroTurf, which I think I'm getting. I um, made an order from somewhere online, not eBay, but the actual company that produced the record. And it came to 40 Americans. So by the time it gets up here with exchange rate and shipping costs, it's probably going to cost me 80 Canadian. That's a lot of money to pay for a record, but I'm a huge Alice Cooper fan and I kind of had to have it. Um, I'm still going to, it didn't get shipped up to Ontario or Canada yet. It might be in here this week, but I've talked to a lot of record stores in Canada and it hasn't arrived, but it might have arrived later later this week. I haven't really talked to anyone. Uh, so I just decided to go direct route and um, I'm excited for that. But my second choice is Typo Negative Bloody Kisses. Uh, this is a 90s band. Uh, it's hard to describe them. I guess if you brought the music of the Munsters alive but made it gothy. So you got that Munsters keyboard, but you got like gothy, deep, baritone kind of vocals. Uh, Peter Steele, interesting lead singer. Uh, he was a giant, man. He was like 6'8", and he uh, filed his teeth down to look like fangs, and he just had like this self-deprecating humor, and he was just an interesting fellow. He died, I think, in 2009, unfortunately. Um, I think it was drug-related. He was in uh, jail, and uh, there's just a lot of YouTube videos out there. He was in jail for like drug-related charges, but there's a lot of YouTube video interviews of that they're explaining the situation um i don't want to really say what happened to him i didn't like all the stuff i knew i learned five years ago and i kind of forgotten since uh but yeah just a great band self self-deprecating like i said like on the back it's got don't mistake lack of talent for genius uh, which is original to the original cassette and cd this is three lp it's got um a second lp of special edition tracks not everyone's cup of tea this album uh but if you're a fan of Typo Negative, this is like a must-have. Uh, so it's a trifold kind of album. Like that. And uh, there's another back there. And it uh, they did a great job with the packaging. This is from Run Out Groove. And I think they did 6,660 copies of this. And someone in Europe did the same thing so there's like 12,000 copies of this floating around in two variations this one's on green vinyl the one in Europe is on silver vinyl green was always Peter Steele's favorite color so I kind of wanted to go for green and this was just like a breakout album for him the videos you know caught me by surprise in the 90s I thought it was like a pretty awesome video I uh, came to 60 Canadian and then I had to pay a bit of shipping on top of that because I got it from a record store that had uh, one copy left. And what else? I passed out. Record Store Day really gets you hyped, eh? And I passed on like a lot of great albums that I kind of wanted. Uh, there was a Ramones album. It was live from Glastonbury. Or Glastonbury. I'm saying stuff wrong. And uh, I really wanted that. It was 35 Canadian, which is not expensive, really, when you think of it. Um, but the track listing was pretty much identical to It's Alive, uh, which I have on CD, and I was just like, oh, I don't want to go broke. And uh, Collective Soul had uh, their first album released on Red Vinyl, wanted that, had the opportunity to get it, didn't get it, and um, Taylor Swift, I'm a closet Taylor Swift fan, like, I don't know the songs or anything too well, but I like the music, and she released two albums on... Uh, clear and smoke vinyl they were running at 39 canadian each and i was like uh eh, i gotta pass like i love taylor and all but um i can listen to that on spotify you know i just this collecting thing really gets to you so you gotta you gotta be careful and budget your money or else because there's something great coming out every week and uh you gotta take your your dings where you can i guess and you got to get the stuff you really want. 
and I try and set like a precedent of what I get. So I try to not buy live albums. I try not to buy greatest hits albums. Um, I try to buy like the special things on vinyl that are unique. And I'll go into that maybe in another video. But uh, here's a special one for me. It is Ministry uh, Psalm 69. It's on vinyl. Uh, this was cut by Chris Bellman. And if you go on Discogs, this is like one of the best sounding albums, according to a lot of people. And I love this album too. I, it's not for everyone. It's industrial, kind of metal. Uh, the hit off this was Jesus Built My Hot Rod. And it's got uh, New World Order, which features... Um, sound clips from George Bush, who, who actually just passed away today. Uh, so rest in peace, George. And um, yeah, just a great album overall. Really recommend you get it on vinyl if you get the chance. Uh, it was at $16 because uh, of a Black Friday sale. So I had to pick that up. Uh, another $16 album I got was uh, Van Halen, 1984. I didn't realize this, but when you flip it like this, um, this is right side up, as opposed to like that. Uh, this album sounds great. Uh, another Ted Templeman uh, production. Uh, not their best album, but I'd still give it a 10 out of 10 on um, for me. Uh, my favorite is Women and Children First, but I just love this album. And um, my favorite track isn't even the hits. It would be, uh, I don't even know the name of the track unless I look at it. It is, um, my favorite track is All Wait. I just think that's a great song. So that has a Warner Brothers uh, label there. And uh, you get the inner sleeve here, which is true to the original. This doubles as a jacket. And you got that. And just a, a great record overall. Uh, you put it on and you're, you're tapping your toe while you're listening to this thing. So a goal of mine is to get every Iron Maiden album on vinyl. Um, I'm not like a huge Maiden fan, but I want to be. I just, I think they're a great band. I don't know all the songs that aren't hits. Um, so I'm just learning all their new stuff. And I discovered I love their first two albums. And I decided to go with uh, the tour that I saw in 2006. And that is A Matter of Life and Death. They played this whole album live. And then they played like three of their hits. And I was kind of disappointed at the time. And um, I've listened to this album five times since I got it. I got it about four weeks ago. And I still can't tell you what song's which. Um, but every song is pretty awesome. And it's I think this will warm up to be one of my favorites. It's on uh, a gatefold. It's two LPs. It's got some nice custom labels. Um, so yeah, you get your custom inner sleeve here. And you got your labels there. Like that. Yeah, it's upside down. So yeah, it's them on a tank. And I am just, I'm kind of fascinated with uh, army and skeleton imagery. Um, and I think it happens, I think I am. For one, it's just kind of bloody cool. Here's the back there. And for two, uh, when I was a kid, I went to the uh, Canadian National Exhibition in Toronto. And um, I'm going to ramble on here. I saw... Two things that were really cool. I was, I was, I think it was about eight at the time, and I saw, I saw, a statue of Terry Fox made out of butter, and they had a life size cow, life size cow made out of butter, and that just blew my mind. Uh, for who, Americans who are watching this or Europeans, a Canadian fox is a popular, um, not a popular, but just a, a Canadian hero to many. I was a young man, he was either late teens or early twenties, who had cancer, and he, to raise money and. Um, and uh, research money and I guess what am I trying to say here knowledge no I can't think right now I don't know why because um, I'm on camera that's why just to raise awareness that's what I'm thinking of cancer he uh, decided to jog across Canada run across Canada I think he was doing 20 kilometers a day I forget now the exact number he do more or less and Canada's hard to, to run across it's not flat in the, the east it's quite rocky and uh, he made it he only made it to i think to thunder bay in ontario i, I forget i am canadian i just haven't um read up on terry fox recently uh i wouldn't know if i read up but yeah he didn't make it all the way across canada he unfortunately passed away and yeah they had a statue made out of butter and 
I just remember seeing that and it just kind of stuck with me. And um, they also had all these wooden figures and um, I guess dioramas, like scenes of in a separate viewing, like not in the same room as the Terry Fox butter statue, but in a separate area, not even relevant to, to Terry Fox, of us like Vietnam and World War II soldiers who were skeletalized. So you'd have like a World War or a Vietnam figure in his plane in the jungle and you'd be found skeletonized and you'd have a soldier in the trench skeletonized and it just stuck with me and um, I know war is tragic and it, it, I don't think it was promoting war it was just just had such a visual impact on me and I guess that's why I like like this album cover and I went with uh, this one here uh, just because it reminded me of that another band I want on vinyl especially the first eight albums which I have five out of the eight so far so I'm missing Three uh, is Black Sabbath. It's my favorite Black Sabbath album cover is this. It's just like this haunting image of this woman. This house still stands. There's um, there's an article out there where you can kind of look at how it looks today. And this is the deluxe version, so it's got a bonus LP, and that has um, let's see. I guess I have to pull out the album to see. It's not listed. So it has Evil Woman, Don't Play Your Games With Me, Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath, Instrumental, The Wizard. There's the labels there. It's got Behind the Wall of Sleep, NIB, Evil Woman, Sleeping Village, The Warning. And as I'm listing these, these are like alternate versions of tracks on here. And uh, I was happy to get this. I think it cost me $24. It's normally in the $40 range. So again, it just had like a flash sale on Amazon. I had to snap this up because I was missing it on vinyl. I don't even have it on CD anymore. I gave it to my nephew and my cassettes are long gone. I have a few cassettes left that I might show you in one video, but yeah, this is like the third medium I've owned it on and I'm, we're back to vinyl after I bought it on cassette and CD. And this is just a phenomenal album. Um, I'm going to tell you a story about this album after I explain this album. Uh, this is another vinyl I wanted. Uh, my second favorite ACD album. I'm trying to get all the ACDCs on vinyl, especially the Bon Scott era. Highway to Hell is my favorite. This is a close second. And uh, you got this nice little insert here. Uh, the only problem with this album is I don't know if it's like an Australian thing. I'm just joking. I don't think this was oppressed in Australia, but this spindle hole doesn't fit on my spindle very well. I have to kind of press down really hard to get this thing on there and play. But anyway, going to my story that ties Black Sabbath and ACDC together, I first heard the song on here called Ride On, which is my favorite ACDC song. It's called Ride On. And I first heard that song at a strip bar that I snuck into when I was 17. And if your family or friends watching this and you know me, please don't tell my mom this. She would not be happy I snuck into a strip bar at age 17. Anyway, the stripper first played Black Sabbath. And she put, like, um, this blindfold on and did the, her dance or whatever to Black Sabbath. And I thought that was so cool. And then uh, she did ride on. And um, I don't think these songs are strip club staples. I don't go to a lot of strip clubs. I went when I was 17. That was, like, the thing to do when you're 17. I... I only go really now during bachelor parties or something. Uh, it's just, I don't care if you go to them. I just, it's just not my thing. Um, I don't really go out and drink. And uh, I'm not trying to bash anyone who goes to strip clubs or trying to make you feel guilty for going. Or if you hate going, all the power to you. Do whatever you want with your life. That's not what this is about. I just heard this song at the strip bar. And um, I thought it was really awesome. And... Uh, uh, the song I hear, the big hit, was of course Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. And there's a song called Big Balls, which I used to sing as a kid and I didn't realize what balls were at the time. And um, my mom let me get away with it. But I'm kind of thinking back going, huh, that's kind of funny. Um, generally, I'll go into something else another day. I grew up in like a Christian kind of household. My mom did let me listen to my brothers listen to this music. But when I turned... Yeah, you know, 16 and old enough to buy this stuff because I had a job by that point. It's kind of frowned upon because uh, the satanic panic thing was going on. And um, that's going to tie into this one. 
Uh, this is Guns N' Roses. I wasn't allowed to have this album as a kid. My mom found it and she kind of, she didn't tell me to get rid of it, but she kind of was like, you know, I wish she would get rid of that. And then two years ago, because my mom's totally changed, she wouldn't let me play Dungeons and Dragons and read The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and whatever. And then she's calmed down a bit. I guess the church has calmed down a bit. The satanic panic is over with. Um, and she, she understands, that, like everyone else should, that satanic music doesn't really exist. I guess it might to some, but these are just people trying to make a living and they're talented and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But she bought my um, nephew this, not on vinyl, but as a t shirt. So her grandkid bought her this thing that, you know, she said, Oh, you can't really have that in the house, Joel. I, you know, keep it at school. I don't really don't want it in the house. And then she bought him a t shirt. So people come around. I'm not like slap, slandering my mom or anything. It's just kind of a funny story. So this is. This was on sale. It was normally 40 Canadian. It went down to 26 Canadian on Record Store Day or Black Friday. Uh, it's got this metallic slipcover. I got to be careful opening it because it's got some nudity inside, animated nudity. Uh, so yeah, this was like the original cover and I can't show you the backside because it's got that uh, nudity on it. And then you got the... Oop, that is upside down. And I gotta be careful again how I open this because I can't show you that. That's the insert, and um, it comes with some like band photos, so that one's pretty cool. And then this one here, this one's kind of silly. It kind of reminds me of like 90210 or Saved by the Bell like promo thing. Um, it's funny how they include that. Uh, lyrics are on the back. And uh, this is 2LP, but uh, if I pulled it the right LP, um, so it's stretched across two LPs, but the fourth side is, if you can see those scratches there, actually you can kind of see the hologram in the, the corner here. So when you play this, I'm surprised you can see that hologram. There's like a hologram that, that shows up. So you can see the scratches and you can kind of see the hologram there. Kinda. Like in the upper corner. At the and uh I always kind of wanted an album with a hologram. The first saw it with um I think a rush album. And I'm not like a huge rush fan, so I didn't get it. And then one of Jack White's albums came out with a hologram, it was just kind of like an angel, and I was like, eh, it's it's alright. And then there's a Star Wars one for um for an album soundtrack and it had like a TIE Fighter, Millennium Falcon. And I wanted that, but the album was 60 bucks and I couldn't justify it at the time. And now here I am buying an Alice Cooper album online for like 80 bucks for one, for, for one vinyl. Um, but I finally got it. So I'm kind of happy. The collector in me is happy. And this is just a great album overall. Uh, so that's Appetite for Destruction. And that's like the 2018 re-release. And they did, they did a great job with that. Uh, the next vinyl is a band I want to get into. And it's called Uriah Heep. Uh, the song off here, the big hit, is Easy Living. And uh, this just got released yesterday. I just got in the mail yesterday. I've, I've only given it two, two listen-throughs. So it comes with a... Um, I don't know if this is the original cover. Or if this is the original cover, or if they're both the same. I guess they're kind of both the same. It said in the uh, the hype sheet that it came with the original cover and a alternate cover, but those kind of look the same to me. Maybe this is the original cover. Uh, so yeah, it came with a little booklet as well. I haven't read this yet because again, I just got it yesterday, and it's a gatefold. And I can't show you the vinyl itself because it is in my uh, record player, but I'll show you the the inner sleeves. And I'm not very familiar with Uriah Heep. Um, from what I gather, they sing a lot of songs about like wizards and dragons and rainbows and stuff, like kind of that kind of stuff, fantasy stuff. And uh, they got the Hammond organ in the album, and it's just kind of not uplifting music, but just happy, not even happy, just, just, it's music you can kind of sit around to and drink beer to, and it's in the background, and you can kind of tune in and go, yeah, that's really cool. And it's just cool stuff. 
And it's a band I want to get into. They got tons of albums out there. That's a recent reissue, and it cost me $23 Canadian. Another uh, vinyl that I wanted and it was on my want list is this Nine Inch Nails, The Fragile. It's produced by Bob Ezrin. This is three LPs, and it is super heavy for, for three LPs because it be comes with uh, two ginormous books. There's your first booklet. This is just lyrics like that. And then it comes with, um, so this is written by Bob Ezrin in 2016, and it's his uh, Thoughts on the Fragile. He wrote it from Toronto. Bob Resin produced the album, like I said. He produced my favorite band's albums, uh, Miles Cooper. He produced Kiss. Three albums by Kiss, The Alder, Revenge, and Destroyer. He did The Wall by Pink Floyd. He's done a lot. And this is a recent reissue by Trent Reznor's label. And they pay a lot of attention to this stuff. Uh, this just sounds pristine. Uh, another album I thought, actually all these albums sound awesome, but the Black Sabbath album is like one of the best sounding albums I've ever heard. It's just crystal clear that I reviewed earlier. Um, if, so if you don't have it on LP, I recommend getting the two disc edition. It just sounds so good. Uh, but this does sound good. This isn't my favorite Nine Inch Nails album. It is a lot of people's favorite though, and a lot of people consider this his best. My favorite is probably the Broken album or the Downward Spiral, and that has more to do with where I was at my point in my life at, at that point, I guess. You know, how you grow up kind of shapes how uh, you feel about albums. And it comes with like this download card. I already got the thing, um, but I'm just showing you this is the download card. Um, and I'm just hiding the code just in case someone tries to sneak it. I don't think anything would come out of it because I already have it. I just ah, I just see other people hide that stuff, so I do too. Um, what else came with? Ah, yes, the Guns N' Roses came with a uh, download card as well. And then this next album that I'm going to show you came with a download card. And it is the No Plan EP by David Bowie. And, oh yeah, Destroying Angels also came with the download Ooh, download card too. So, some albums come with download cards, some don't. Uh, so this is the No Plan EP by David Bowie. And uh, this has an etching on the back of it. So it's got four songs on here. It's got uh, Lazarus, which is my favorite Bowie song right now. No Plan, Killing a Little Time, and When I Meet You. I've only listened, when I met you, sorry, I've only listened to this like three times, so I only really know the Lazarus song. Everything hasn't like grown on me yet. Uh, here's the etching. So you got the black star at the top and those stars at the bottom spell Bowie if you, if you look at it. And this was $16, which is quite a bit to pay for an EP, but it is on 12 inch vinyl, has got the etching and um, it sounds great. But this next one is a holy grail for me. It's not even that rare. It's normally 40 bucks, but I decided to get it because it was at, um, came down to $32. And this is, I should mention too, the Fragile um, is normally 50 and it came down to $36. Uh, this is Black Star by David Bowie. And the packaging on here is really cool. So you got your, your vinyl in there. It is, um, a gatefold and these stars here. So these stars on the left, uh, when you take the vinyl out and you hold up to the sun or a bright light stars do come through and someone discovered that. And this comes with like a, a nice little booklet with some spot varnishing. So you got black on black. I think that's why it's expensive because it's expensive to print. Uh, I didn't see a download card for this one. But yeah, you can see like the spot varnishing if I hold it up properly. Really cool album. Um, might be my favorite David Bowie album. And I'm not saying that because, you know, he passed away. 
if we take uh, his recent passing away, I guess it's been three years now, going on three years, out of the equation, this album just is amazing. It's kind of jazzy. Uh, it kind of takes you to a new place. Um, Bowie does have a lot of great albums. Maybe Lowe's my favorite. Even the whole Roger is like a close favorite, and Heroes and Ziggy Stardust is becoming a favorite. It, um, he's just got a lot of great albums, you know, but this just kind of stands out to me, I guess, because he's dealing with death and mortality. And um, a lot of people think that he was dying when he was recording this, but he actually successfully underwent cancer treatment, and he, I think he thought he was in the clear, and then things just kind of turned around for him. Um, so a lot of people love this album because they think he's dealing directly with death, but I don't think he is. I think he's just being David Bowie, and um, that's up for debate, though, and I'm not going to talk more too much about it because I'd have to do a little more research to know everything about it. Next album is Corrosion of Conformity, No Cross, No Crown. Uh, this is normally a $40 album. It came down to $24. It's got some nice inner sleeves, and this is on like a purple or violet or... I know I'm touching my albums, don't freak out on me. Um, purple or violet album. I'm colorblind, so I don't know exactly what color that is. Uh, COC, if you don't know who they are, they're kind of like... I guess they gained popularity in the 90s. They had an album called Wise Blood. And um, they had that other album with the Albatross. That was a pretty big single at the time. They kind of sound like Sabbath. Um, like Volume 4... Masters of Reality Sabbath, a kind of slow, grungy, chugging along. Uh, they have a lot of different variations of this band, and um, my favorite singer for the band is Pepper, and he's back to singing for this album. And uh, I've only given it like two chances to really listen to, because I got a lot of vinyl in November. And then this album's kind of beat up to look like um, it's beat up, but it's not actually beat up. This is just printed like this, the actual... When I first got in the mail and opened it, I'm like, they sent me a beat-up copy, but it's just, that's how it's printed. Um, yeah, kind of a Black Sabbath, kind of doom metal, thrash, kind of, but good stuff. I don't really recommend it if you're not into, like, heavier music, even though it's not that heavy. Comparative, it's kind of like the heaviness of Metallica. Second to last album is Helmet, and this is on limited edition red and blue colored vinyl. And, uh... There we go there. That's what it looks like. Um, a lot of you might not know who Helmet is. It's again another, another 90s band. Had a big hit with uh, the song In the Meantime. And that's, I think this is the In the Meantime album. I'm not sure now. I think it, this album is called In the Meantime. But um, I got this for $16. And uh, I never had it on CD. I had it on a cassette, but it was a tape copy. So I figured, you know, I love this album. As a teenager, I should pay the band back. Now that I got some money and um, great album, good pressing, no no stacks or pops. And the last album I got, and again, like I said, I try not to get greatest hits albums, but I love this album a lot, and I have all his other albums. The reason why I don't really go for greatest hits is I think you should try and, as a music fan, is you know a band when they put together an album, they put a lot of time into the concept and the track listing, and you should, listening to an album as a whole with all the songs kind of gives you a complete feeling like songs we tend to go towards hits but you know you get a lot more depth out of those deeper cuts in albums and I'm not saying you shouldn't get greatest hits albums I just try not to I'm the world's biggest hypocrite so I'm going to show you a lot of greatest hits albums every month probably because um, it's also a great way to learn about a band and then span off and get the albums where that song might have been on and learn from that so this is Alice Cooper's Greatest Hits. Uh, it came out last week. This cost me $23. Um, I had this on cassette, never had it on CD. And I remember looking at my brother's copy on vinyl because it had these, these inserts. And it's just on black vinyl. Got the Warner Brothers label with the palm trees or whatever. And this is an album I know that I just... I just know it um, track by track, even though I haven't listened to it in like 20, probably 28 years. Once this thing started playing, I knew exactly the exact track listing. 
because I had it on cassette and I just wore the thing out. I used to work as a dishwasher at a golf course and I had to walk to work and it took about a half hour each way. And I just usually listen to that or Love It to Death by Alice Cooper or Poison, plus a lot of other albums. But I was kind of a dumb kid because I I was in high school at the time and I'd when you're working in a restaurant, you don't get out till like 11 at night. So I'd walk home at night with my headphones in down this kind of like deserted rural road, not even listening to the cars, which could have, you know, hit me by accident, even though I was walking on a sidewalk. It's just, or someone could have mugged me, but I had like the headphones cranked, just walking, no fear in the world. And um, I listened to this album a lot because, you know, I buy a cassette with my money. I was making five bucks at the time. I'd work. You know, in the beginning, you'd only get three shifts a week, so you're only making, pulling in like 60 bucks after tax as a 16-year-old or whatever. Ah, uh, Canada, we're taxed a lot more. Actually, I don't know if I was taxed as a 16-year-old or not. I don't think you pay tax until you're like 18, income tax. I don't know. Sidestep there. Uh, anyway, that is my November haul, and uh, I went a little longer than I thought I would, 36 minutes. Um, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, if you got a channel where you do vinyl stuff and we got similar interests, let me know. Let me watch your stuff. I'm always, I spend a lot of time on YouTube now. It's my favorite thing to do. I get home from work. I eat my dinner. I watch YouTube. Um, there's a lot of great channels out there. My favorite right now is still Jamie, Jamie Cottle. Just a shout out to him. He's putting out like four or five great videos a, a week. And, um, I don't comment on everything cause I don't want to think I'm stalking the guy. So that's my message to Jamie. Uh, if any of you want the Alice Cooper um, Live from the Astro Turf album, um, send me a message or an email. You can reach me at baxter.joel at gmail.com and I'll send you, I'll pass along the information. There's two versions. There's the Record Store Day version and then there's the uh, Good Record version. Good Record is the name of the company that puts it out. And that's $60. It comes with extra stuff. It comes with like 10 8x10 photos. And it comes with a Dennis Dunaway pick and a vinyl slip mat and some stickers. Uh, I was going to get it, but before shipping, it was going to cost me 80 Canadian. So after shipping, it probably cost 100 bucks, and I can't justify that. But um, if that's something you're interested in, just pass me a message along. And I'm going to take off now. So thank you for watching, and I'll, I'll be back next week. Bye now.